All right, well, here we are again, uh, trying to help you as a grace group to dig a little deeper into what we've been talking about really this whole month and specifically today. Uh, the series this month has been Superman, and I'm not going to review that, but uh, y'all can certainly take a moment to review all the things that we've talked about this month as far as um, different superpowers that we have as children of God. Today we talked about John's darlings and how John's darlings are truly God's darlings, and that's us, and our superpower is love. So what stood out to you, or how could we dig a little deeper into this topic today? Well, funnily enough, uh exactly the same thing that hit me in Sunday school this morning you know you were talking about um, commandments basically mm -hmm. and following commandments and I got thinking about the reasons why we follow commandments or should I say the reasons what should be the reason why we follow commandments I mean you know the law came from Moses Jesus tightened the screws on the law a little more you know it was already proven that man couldn't obey the law of Moses and Jesus took that a little further, taking some stuff from the Old Testament about, you know, God examines the heart. And Jesus taught us that, you know, to hate your brother in your heart is to murder him. Um, even more proof that we can't follow the law, um, except that we walk by the Spirit. Mm -hmm. When we walk by the Spirit, we can follow the law. But there's a verse in uh, John chapter 14, number f verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. Thinking of who that's coming from is coming from Jesus. Um, we can assume it's not a threat. Right. Um, we can assume that he means what he says. And to me, what that verse says is that what should be the reason why we obey the commandment shouldn't be that we're afraid of God's wrath. Um, it shouldn't be that we're afraid of the consequences. Um, it should be because we love God. And that should be because we love him that we don't want to grieve his heart. That should be the reason why we obey his commandments. Because let's face it, the law and the commandments, what they teach us is what God's character is, who he is, who he is morally. So we know that breaking one of those laws isn't just like, you know, a law of the land that's written, you shall not leave your neighbor's stone or something, you know, in man's law. This is God laying down law because this is the core of who he is. We know if we break those laws, we're going to grieve his heart. Yeah. So we need to be following the law for the right reason. And that reason is, I love you, Lord. I don't want to hurt you. I want it to grieve me as much as it grieves you. And the reason it grieves me is not just because I've broken that law, because I've grieved you. Hmm. So that's really what stood out to me. I mean... And Psalm 119, I don't think we know who the author of that one is. I think it's questionable, but it says, And I will delight myself in thy commandments, which I have loved. Mm. I love your commandments. In other words, your morality, who you are, is important to me as well. So that's what came to my heart this morning. Well, there's um, great significance in the motive of our obedience. So uh, if our motive is wrong, then our obedience is irrelevant. Yeah. So that's what you're really getting into. Uh, the Bible says law came through Moses, but grace and truth came, came through Jesus Christ. Christ. And once you get in, into the, the Christ side of things, then now we are dealing with the law of love or the law of liberty, which is just other ways of describing exactly you know what you're describing there. So you know people that I'm in love with, people that love me, I'm pleased with them, they're pleased with me. I'm looking for ways. I know this with my own wife, with my own children. I'm looking for ways to make them happy. I'm looking for ways to make them smile. I want to, when I discover something that I'm like, ooh, they'll really like this, I get excited about it. And that really is what it's supposed to be like to obey yeah. the commandments of God. Yeah. Um, Great peace have they who love God's law and nothing shall offend them, the scripture mm -hmm. says. Great peace have they who love God's law. Um, the spirit of the law uh, that and you know I was thinking of this as you were talking Russ if we and when we see that and I just came out of a circumstance where I just saw some evidence of the devastating effects of sin um, when we when we see how damaging and destructive sin is then we do learn to hate it yeah. and we see how um, glorious and good 
God's law is and how orderly and how helpful and all those things, we do learn to love it. And his commandments are not grievous to us then, the scripture says. So, boy, this is plain, simple truth and right down where the rubber meets the road. So I hope that uh, our grace groups can dig into this a little deeper. and We can all just fall in love with Jesus and not love the world or the things that are in the world, as John said in his epistle. Well, uh, that's something else you want to add? Go ahead. I was just going to say, I just thought of a quote from Charles Spurgeon, which was um, saying along the lines of, you know, I'll paraphrase it, people of the flesh fall into sin and they love it. Mm-hmm. Um, people who love the Lord fall into sin and they hate it. Yeah. So that's exactly what you were saying. Yeah, wonderful truth. Good expression of it too. Um, so last week we mentioned on the video that your wife was having surgery. So people probably went, well, how did it go? So <laughs> how is she? What's going on? Um, she's doing okay. She's very sore. She's very uncomfortable. Um, she's also being very stubborn. Um, the day she came home from the hospital, I came out of the bathroom and caught her trying to do the dishes. Oh, gosh. So <laughs> she, she's, she's getting better at it. You know, she's learning to sit down and let me take care of things. It's making things difficult for me. It's giving me a lot more pain than I usually <laughs> right. get, but... I love my wife. Yes. <laughs> uh, I would loan you a whip to keep her away from the dishes, but I don't have one, so I can't <laughs> loan it to you. <laughs> All right, so pray for the Nash family. Uh, yes. And her recovery is estimated three months? Is yes. that, yeah, so yeah. that's um, that's quite a time. So be in prayer for them along the way. And um, Next week, I obviously will not be making this video. Uh, hopefully my son will be making it. He's preaching this coming Sunday. I'll be at camp, so we'll figure it out one way or another. We'll get a video to you, so. So have a great week, and uh, I won't see you Sunday. See you the week after that. Unless you're going to camp, I will see you.